Hey everyone, it's Kelly. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you 10 books I would take with me to a deserted island. <laughs> is a top 10 Tuesday prompt and it's going up on a Friday because <laughs> school with my kids has been hell this week. I don't know what it is. Probably because it's the last week of January. We are just done with this month. We... <laughs> this month has been hell uh but yeah so and this prompt is just really good in general for wanting to get away and I read a top 10 Tuesday prompt that said what 10 books would you take to a deserted island I'll share that list with you today so and I got my list right here so the first one that I would take with me is The Hunger Games by Susan Collins. This is my favorite series in the world. And I just need a little Katniss and Peeta in my life. Uh, this list doesn't include my Kindle app on my phone. So I have an unlimited supply of Kindle books. So I could buy Catching Fire and Mockingjay. And when I finish this one, I can just reread Catching Fire and Mockingjay. And then reread this again. Just it, it goes in a cycle because Peta is my bae. Who says bae anymore? Me. But yes, this Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. Love it. It's a must. The second book is part of a series that I read in my childhood. You would know it if you watched my childhood favorites video. And that is Daughters of the Moon. This is book three. I would take all ten books. I'm including the series as a whole so yes I got the third one because it looks the best um yeah the series is by Lynn Ewing the third book is called Nightshade and I plan on rereading that series sometime this year okay the next one is my favorite book of 2020 and that is The Clancy's of Queens by Tara Clancy uh, this just made me laugh to no end and I just reread it right after I finished it so I think it'll be a constant reread for me. All of these books are rereads. Nothing's new. So, and I'm going to be going through this list fast. This is going to be a short video. Hopefully, if I can stop rambling off at the mouth. Because I've already talked about all of these books at some point in videos previous. But yes, The Clancy's of Queens by Terry Clancy. The fourth one is a middle grade and I absolutely love it. And that is The Simple Art of Flying by Corey Leonardo. She has a new book coming out this year called The Hedgehog of Oz. And I just cannot wait for it. This book is about two uh, African gray parrots named Alistair and Aggie. And Alistair, he has to take care of Aggie. He is her protector. And then she gets bought one day out of the pet store. And he gets sold to an old woman named Albertina Plotkin. And she's just the best character ever. And so this book made me laugh. It made me sad. Uh, we have a new Christmas song out of it. Deck the Halls with Fleas and Fur Balls. So, yes. It's great. Next book is... My Lady Jane by Cynthia Hamm, Brady Ashton, and Jody Meadows. I read this last year in 2020 and it just made me laugh when at a time when I really needed it. It was the start of the pandemic. I was uh, freaking out. Uh, I didn't know then what I know now that the cases would rise in the 2000s, 3000s a day for my state. And I was freaking out when it hit 200. So, yeah. But, uh, it, this just made me laugh to no end when I needed it the most. And this will definitely be a reread for years to come. The Martian by Andy Weir. Uh, the first line had me tickled pink <laughs> when I read it. And basically, it's, I'm fucked. So... Uh, I don't like movie covers, and this cover is just making me cringe. So, Matt Damon. He's not a favorite actor of mine. So, I'm going to get this book switched eventually, but 
Uh, if you don't know what this is about, this is about a guy. He's with his crew on Mars, and there's a storm brewing, and it hits, and they have to leave so the storm doesn't damage the ship, and he gets uh, lost. He gets pulled away from his uh, uh, human chain, and he he gets left behind on Mars. So he has to live in the... What's it called? The little capsules that is on Mars. And he has to grow his own potatoes and eat. Book number seven is a book that I really enjoyed. And it is a translated work. I think this is the first translated work that I've read in my adult life, I think. And that's really bad. Um, I'm going to be remedying that this year, but I read this back in 2019. I won it in a Goodreads giveaway, and that is The Girl from the Train by Irma Jaber. Irma Jaber is from South Africa, and this was, she wrote it in the African's language. I think I'm saying that right. I still can't, don't know if I'm pronouncing the name of the language correctly. It's a-F-R-I-K-A-A-N-S. Africans? Africans? I need to. Hold that. Africans. Africans. I said it right. Yay! Okay. So. Africans. This book was translated from Africans. This author is from South Africa. And I think more of her books are being translated from Africans to English. So. Yeah, and it's about this um, German Jew girl. Uh, she uh, escapes from a train going to a concentration camp. And her parents get blown up in this train by a guy who eventually saves her out of the woods. And she, they, he takes her to an orphanage. And she's not safe on either side. If she's a Jew, then the Germans will kill her and if she goes to a Polish I think she's a German Pole if she goes to a Polish orphanage she'll be turned away because she's German uh, so she eventually gets adopted by a South African couple next book was a favorite of 2018 and that is the hearts invisible furies by John Boyne this was my first foray into John Boyne and loved this book it's about this girl who, she lives in an Irish village and she's a teen mom. She's pregnant and her, um, the vicar or the priest of this uh, little village's church, he bans her from this village. He throws her out and her mom and her dad let them. And so she goes to Edinburgh or Glasgow and finds work. And then along the way, she, met, she meets this guy going to Glasgow too. And they become friends. And to be able to get this apartment, they have to pretend that they're a couple. But secretly, the guy is going to be staying with another guy in this apartment along with the girl while she's pregnant. And the two men are in a are in a relationship, and then it's all from there. But it takes place from the girl's uh, baby that she gives up for adoption, and it's about his life, about how he didn't know who his real family was, and now um, throughout his whole life, his adopted father would tell him, "You're not a real Avery," and so it's just great. It's about him going to Amsterdam and going to the Anne Frank house and uh, being in New York during the times of the heightened times of the AIDS crisis and HIV and falling in love and losing his uh, true love to HIV and then eventually finding his family. So I loved it. Uh, highly recommend and it made me cry it made me laugh it made me angry it made me want to get up and do something and yes so, 
highly recommend. Uh, I'm going to be reading more by John Boyne. Second to the last book, and that is Roseblood by A.G. Howard. This is a Phantom of the Opera retelling. I would take Phantom of the Opera, but I have not read Phantom of the Opera. I have watched the movie, but I have not read the book. So, I would take this in its place because it's just, it had so many connections. Uh, it connected me to the movie of me watching it with my husband. His first time watching it was with me because I loved it. I watched it in high school with two of my best friends at the time. And we would sing the songs all through school. And another one, it talked about a baby being born prematurely. My third daughter, my last daughter, my little tiny terror who's going to turn nine next Saturday. Is <laughs> she was born premature? She was born five weeks early. She was born at five pounds or six pounds, and then they weighed her at five pounds, 15 ounces. And then she had lung problems, her lungs collapsed. But we're not getting into that. But it's got uh connections to the source and to premature babies and death and lungs, and it's just. I connected with this. The last book on this list is part of a series. I would not take the whole series with me because I did not like the first book. The third book and the fourth book was okay. The fourth book has one of my favorite quotes ever. And then the, the two novellas. The last novella, Stars Above, has my favorite story in it. But to get to that story, you need the original story. And so, I would bring Scarlet by Marissa Meyer. The couple in this book, Scarlet and Wolf, they are my favorite. I love how Scarlet is a farm girl and she, the tomatoes and Wolf, uh, he's just like a hesitant but tough uh, soldier and he is infatuated. He is, obs not obsessed, but... He's enamored with Scarlet and he wants to take care of her and protect her. And I am all for that. The story in Stars Above, if you have not read it. Or their little snippet of time in uh, Wires and Nerve of Wolf having the thing that leads to the story in Stars Above. Here are the 10 books I would take to a deserted island with me. If you have any books that you would take with you to a deserted island, let me know down in the comments. And other than that, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you on my next video. Bye.